Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra. And in this module, we're going to be talking about the XR Socket Interactor. The XR Socket Interactor is not intended to be put onto your hands. I'm actually gonna go ahead and create myself a, a bit of a setup here. I'm gonna create for myself a sphere. This sphere is going to represent my socket and I'm going to put a cube above it. Let me just create a 3D object. Here's a cube. Let's make it so that's uh, like above this game object and that it's going to fall into it, basically. I'm going to make this box an XR grab interactable component. And it's going to automatically add a rigid body and that rigid body has used gravity checked. So this box theoretically should fall towards this sphere. I'm just gonna call this falling box for now. This sphere, I'm going to add the XR socket interactor. Now what the socket interactor does is it grabs any grab interactable component that isn't currently being held by something else. And the, the way it works is very similar to the direct interactor is you have to have an is trigger box that is checked. So this collider has to be a trigger. And when I hit play, I don't even have to put the headset on. This box is going to fall towards this interactor. And as soon as it gets near, it gets snapped in. It gets grabbed by the socket interactor. And when I go into the headset, it's not like stuck there, for example. I can actually grab this interactor onto my hand. And of course, I have force grab here. So it's, uh, you know, it's very close. But I can grab it from it. It just holds it there for me. Let me just demonstrate. I'm going to make sure Sure that the XR origin, the right hand controller now has the ray interactor has force grab unchecked and anchor control unchecked just for demonstration purposes. So that I can show that like, as soon as I let go of the box and I let it fall again, it gets snapped back in, which is kind of fun, you know, and you can use the socket interactor, not only to hold things that you want to not drop, like you can create an inventory system with the socket interactor, but you can also use the interactor events on the socket. So this sphere, which I'm going to rename socket, the socket interactor comes with interactor events. So on select entered, right, when this thing grabs an object, do I want to play a sound? Maybe I want to unlock a door, right? Maybe I require a key. And when the key is dropped into this socket, then it unlocks the door. Maybe I, I now have access to some sort of chest. Maybe it plays a victory sound. Maybe I win the game when I put the key into this lock. So you can use socket interactors for a lot. Now, when I talked about using the socket as a key to a door, this might be a problem if you have a large amount of grabbable objects because the socket interactor doesn't differentiate between grab interactable objects. If I create a duplicate of this, it'll have to choose one of them to hold. Here, how about this? I'm going to make this falling box. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to move one above it. And our goal is going to make this socket reject the first box, but accept the second box. What we can do is use the interaction layer mask. So the interaction layer mask, this is something that you might have actually seen a pop-up for when we first installed the XR Interaction Toolkit. But the interaction layer mask lets us create and set up layers to manage what objects, what interactors can interact with what interactable components. So I'm going to click on this drop down menu where it says interaction layer mask, and I'm going to say add a layer, and it'll pop up. It'll actually show me this the the resource where we can actually set this is actually created under this XRI folder in your assets. But in the inspector, when I select interaction layer settings, I can open up interaction layers and I can create a new one called, say, key, right? I'm going to create an interaction layer called key. I'm going to make this socket accept only keys. And the way I can do that is by selecting the XR socket interactor, finding that component in the inspector, using this drop down and checking nothing. So right now it accepts nothing. And then I can check key. So this box only accepts key interactables. So this first falling box, this is not going to be a key. We're going to leave the grab interactable layer mask, the interaction layer mask. This is this is a layer mask that exists on both interactable components and interactor components. So this one's interaction layer mask is just going to be default. But 
the following box above it, the one that I want to be accepted, I'm going to set this one's interaction layer mask to key. I guess it's set to everything. I can also make it only key if I really cared. So what should happen now is when I hit play, this first box is going to pass right through the socket without being grabbed because they don't share a layer. But the second one will be grabbed. This socket, right, if I have it set to everything, it will grab the first box and the second box will not be able to be grabbed. So like it'll fall, the first box will be grabbed. And then the second box is kind of just, I guess, gonna roll off of it or whatever. Basically in order for an interaction to be valid, the interactor and the interactable have to share at least one layer of the layer mask. Depending on how many layers I end up making for my super complicated VR project, maybe I'll have a layer for doors, maybe I'll have a layer for, you know, like all sorts of different types of interactions. If I want to like make sure that only a specific type of object can get into the socket, I can just create a new layer and then make sure that any all interactable components don't include that layer except for the type of object that I care about. I could like make sure that nothing has key except for this particular object. I would make sure that, you know, it's default. This socket, I would make sure that it only accepts keys. Also take notice that if I click on key, it cycles between default and key. Sort of annoying. You have to actually click nothing first before you can select key. So just something to keep in mind. And now, now again, the box that doesn't have the key layer enabled will fall right through it, and the second box will be grabbed. Success. That'll be everything for the XR Socket Interactor. Hopefully we'll see you in the next module. Thank you for watching.